why I stopped caring about the 80-20 rule. All right, so I I spent a lot of time doing the pickup stuff and learned a lot of the pickup stuff and a lot of red pill stuff. And it wasn't until I saw this video that it just made me throw my hands up and say, you know what? I just don't care about the 80-20 rule anymore. There might be an 80-20 rule. It might actually be in practice, but you know what? I don't even care. I'll tell you, and I'm, I'm going to show you why I don't care. Okay. So this is a sermon that President or Pastor Jamal Bryant gave. Uh, early in the uh the summer when you know we had the inst the the ruling from the supreme court okay so i want you to hear you hear this uh hear the the black church the the black church of 2022 argue on this position for 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 what should be the case in terms of the supreme court ruling this week america turned back the hands of time and declared a war on women in this nation i wanted us to stand resolvely to uh say to this nation that if America was authentically pro-life, then they would immediately abolish the death penalty. Okay, so we're seeing what's happening here is we're, we're getting the classic whataboutism. A is bad, but what about B? What about C? What about D? Okay, and look, death penalty is bad, we get that. Okay, <clears throat> but are, are we complain? are we gonna compare the new generation of young unborn black children to people that found themselves in jail yes there are some innocent people on death row got it death row is unfair got it but i mean that's i mean that that's not a really good comparison to make for that compared to you know young children that don't have a chance but anyways i'll listen to you listen to some more what about ism grade a pandering if they were really pro-life then they would put more money into Head Start programs. If they were pro-life, they would seek to cure the opiate addiction in this nation. Okay, so basically that's the what about us. Okay, so that's fine. But we're gonna skip it for it a little bit, but right off the bat, we're seeing what the argument is, is that women should have this right or have the right to, to you know, to child deletion, right? And this is really interesting, I find, because I grew up in the church, okay? And the church that I grew up, I just cannot imagine this sermon. I can't imagine it. I cannot imagine this, this sermon in the church that I grew up in. I can't. A black Baptist church where, when I was younger, if a, if a girl came up pregnant, there was, you could literally not find a person in the church that would, would argue this message. They would, I mean, they would basically point to the, the, the Ten Commandments and say, nope, 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 that's not how we do things in the church. And this is how much the church has changed in 30, 35, 40 years, okay? And a matter of fact, before I keep going, I, I want to throw this graphic up for you guys so you can see this, okay? So I'm going to read it quickly. Reasons for, mm, I'm uh, child deletions. Reasons in 2004, among the structured survey respondents, to the two most common reasons were having a baby would drastically change my life and I can't afford a baby now, cited by 74% and 73% respectively. A large proportion of women cited relationship problems or a desire to avoid single motherhood, 48%. Nearly four in 10 indicated that they had completed their childbearing and almost one third said that they were not ready to have a child. Okay, so these are basically reasons that it, it, I that do not have anything to do with health. Okay, women also cited possible problems affecting the health of the fetus and concerns about their own health. 30, 13 percent and twelve percent. So basically, what we're saying is, basically, you could say one out of eight, I guess, will basically citing health concerns. Okay, so that means seven out of eight were basically doing it for reasons other than health concerns. Okay. So I wanted to lay down that groundwork before we continue into this video because, because what this kind of suggests, it, it speaks to what just kind of dashed my reason for not one, thinking that the 80-20 rule exists and be caring about it, okay? So let, let's listen to some more because this, this next part is basically what kind of just kind of shook me out of that, okay? 
amazing women of this church, of this community. Let's new back. So voice. Here. I don't understand how pregnancy works. Men have to extend their voices as well. And so we speak to this nation to declare that new birth stands with the amazing women of this church, of this community, and of this country. Okay, so I, I, I'm going to, I don't know the ratio of people in this church, but I'm willing to bet that this is this. I think this is the Sunday after Father's Day that he's making this address. But I'm willing to bet that the proportions of women to men in this church is is, is certainly the majority. But I'll, I'll leave that to you guys that women have the right to have authority over their body and it should not be legislated by men in washington dc i want all of us all over this room would you do me a favor would you celebrate the women around you who are competent enough to make decisions about their bodies decisions about their life and okay so so I'm going to I'm going to get into my rant a little bit after we finish this but what you basically what he's saying is that this is this ruling is basically a ruling against, you know, women having control over themselves and 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 this is this is a message coming out of the church pulpit, okay? Decisions about their future. We're praying steadfastly because what we are seeing uh, is racism rearing its head again. Uh, with this measure that has just taken place, uh, babe, black baby infant mortality is going to rise by 30%. Okay, so. So we are, we, if you know the stats uh, for, for what they're saying for, for the deletions, that, that it's, disappo it's disproportionate in, in the black community. A lot of young black children are being deleted, and it's, it's, it's extremely unfortunate because these children, they didn't ask to, to be here. And according to the stats I read earlier, the mo seven times out of eight, that deletion is happening for a reason other than the health of the child or the mother. So it's, it in, in pretty much suggests that it is an elective procedure that is taking place because of, uh, of, of choices the mother's making non-related to health. And it, it just, I'm, you know, I'm gonna hold it. Uh, and hence, we cover the lives of our mothers, of our pregnant mothers, and our unborn babies. I need you to do me a favor, please. While last Sunday was Father's Day, today we stand in the gap for mothers and for emerging mothers. I need you to do me a favor, please, because I need you to be mindful that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty unto God for the pulling down of you're watching a church preacher lobby for abortion watch it strongholds there is something satanic afoot in washington dc so today proudly we dedicate uh, we dedicate babies in our church they're coming at this time uh, because uh, we believe the children are the future Ooh, that, ooh, that's, that's some le logic leap there, boy. But, and I, I'm, oh, man, look, this, this whole situation speaks to just a difference in just the, the uh, quality, frankly, of, of, I mean, what, a mother that is going to have a child and she can look at that child and say, I'm not ready to have this child yet for a reason other than I'm, I might die in this procedure. The child might die in this procedure. A reason other than that, that's the church preached for years and years. Be responsible, wait until you get married. If you have sex, take the precautions. If you have, get pregnant. You're going to have to find that person and make a life for the, you and that person and, and that baby. And that was been that has been preached to us in the church for the duration of my church going, you know, adolescence. And so now we're looking at basically the appeal of don't get married. Go do what you want to do. Be who you want to be with. And it is not the right of 
of the state to tell you that you don't have a right to delete those children. Notice he's not talking about get married first, find someone, be in a committed relationship. He's not talking about any of that. If you have the impulse, you want to go do what you want to do and you can't get your child deleted, that's on the state. And that speaks to basically, as I said earlier, you have sex for two reasons. You want to procreate or you want to have the physical enjoyment, right? So if you have such a high number of people participating in sex merely for physical enjoyment without thinking about the what comes along after that, the possibility of pregnant, of children, of having to have deletions and just doing it purely for the physical beauty the physical pleasure of it and just what what is what does that say about the quality of the 100 in the 80 and the 20 what does it say about that the quality of the 100 people that you're talking about in 80 20 where we know the stakes of sex we've always known the stakes of sex and yet and still knowing the stakes of sex all things considered, we're going from get married, raise a family, have have a family to raise children into the government's the big bad people because they won't let you willy nilly delete your children at your at your leisure. That's why I don't care about the 80 20 rule. If I'm going to the store and there are there are 10 pieces of fruit that I don't want to buy. What, what difference does it matter that two of the pieces of fruit are better than the other eight? What difference does it make? The, I, I, how can you care about, I just don't care about the rule. Who cares? If, if we have a, a society that's basically full of, of a lot of different people doing whatever they want to do without any, without any thought to what's going to become of their actions, and we're just popping out kids willingly without, I just, why would I care? There are a whole bunch of people having sex with a whole bunch of people and, and they're, they're not using traditional methods to birth children and, and start families. So what? I don't care. Let them, if 80% are having sex or 20, 70% are having 30, I don't care. I, it just doesn't matter to me. I don't care. I don't care about who's doing what with whom. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I, I, and I don't even really care about the, the, the pro-choice, pro-life argument. I really don't care. What I care about is, is the fact that it's being used as a crutch to say, well, I want to act the way I want to act and have unprotected sex with who I want to have unprotected sex with. And that just speaks to the, uh, just, it just speaks to a quality of, I, I don't know if there are a lot of decent mates if i mean i just don't see a lot of mates that that are needing to argue that i need uh, this this basically stopgap measure in case i don't take advantage of the myriad of other possibilities for you know having a getting pregnant and then you know even if i do get pregnant i'm going to get rid of it for or i'm going to take care of the child for a reason other than health you want to marry and start a family with a person that's thinking like that and needs those kind of provisions to make sure that they they don't have a child at the wrong time in their lives i mean that's we're talking about just discipline here i'm not saying that they, it, there aren't some cases that slip through the cat correct i'm not saying that what i am saying is that if there's such a large amount of people that see, see that child deletion as like a as like their primary measure of it, it, it speaks to condom use. It speaks to to whatever. I mean, gosh, how many different kinds of, of, of birth control there are? I, it just speaks to the fact that a lot of people are, are having sex with unprotected with a lot of people, not considering what's down the road, and they don't care about the consequences of the, the, the raw sex. And that is why I don't care about the 80-20 rule. If you have a whole society of people that are basically sharing themselves with a small group of men at the top, why would I want any of those? Why would I want any of them? I don't want any of that. I don't want that. I just, I just don't want that. And if that's the game, I, I'll procreate and I'll, I'll step out and, and that's, I'm good with that. 
if that's the game, I, I'll, I'll fulfill my biological imperative and then I'll just step out the game. And I'm fine with that. I am 100% fine with that. But anyways, I, this has been a long rant. I've been ranting for too long. I just, I'm just disappointed. And that's why I don't believe that the 80-20 rule really matters. I'm just, just disappointed. The church is supposed to be the place where the good girls are. That's supposed to be the place where the, the where the salt of the earth good women are. That you go back and you get a good one, you settle down and get a family. And now you're hearing this in the church? It's disheartening. The church is the church as we knew it is not there anymore. It just and it's it's just disappointing. And so that's why I don't care about the 80-20 rule. It doesn't matter. If if you have hundred percent of the people participating in, in behavior that's unbecoming of of future mothers, what difference does it make what percentage is having sex with what percentage? I don't want to start a family with anyone that that that's that's participating in that behavior. It doesn't what difference does it make? Anyways, enough of the rant. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you guys on the next one. And uh, please like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.